Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at line plots. So a line plot uses a number line and X's to represent data. So here we have a number line, a horizontal number line, and then there's going to be a series of X's that are on the number line that's going to represent some kind of data. Now this could be um, number of students each day who picked their nose in class. I don't know, whatever. Let's just choose that, right? So um, we have, um, this would be number of students down here, zero students, two of them uh, pick their, uh, zero of them pick their nose, one each day pick their nose in class. We had two who picked their nose. Okay, kind of yucky, but you know, Funny, I got your attention. <laughs> so that is a line plot. Now let's take some usable data here. So we have this teacher taught a math lesson. She wants to know if the students mostly understood the lesson. So here we have the scores of the math lesson. And you can see we have um, 100% here, 95, 90. So these are going to be the percentages on those math scores. And then here we have tally marks that are going to represent the number of um, students who received that score. Now we can chart this information from our tally chart onto our line plot over here. <laughs> Down here we have the scores represented. We have 65, 70, 75, 80, all the way up to 100. Now let's first start here with the 65%. Uh, so here we had three test scores or math scores that showed a 65%. So we're going to put an X for each of those students who received a 65%. So there's three tally marks. We have three X's above the 65%. Now, looking over here at the 70%, do we have any students who received a 70%? No, we do not. So we're going to leave that one completely blank. Next one is going to be 75%. So how many students received a 75%? There's two, so we put two X's. Moving on to the 80%, how many students received an 80%? There's four tally marks here, which means how many X's are going to be over here? Four X's. Moving on to the 85%, we have five, six, seven students, meaning seven X's. Going over to 90, there's going to be four. 95, we're going to have three. And 100%, we're going to have five X's. So according to the line plot, did most of the class understand the math lesson? So we're going to be looking at this range of numbers right here because I would think that an 80%, 85, 90, any of these scores would show that a student pretty much understood the math lesson. I would say maybe down here in these numbers, 75, 70, 65, if there were a lot down there, that would mean, oh, you know, the class really didn't understand. Um, as a teacher, I might have to go back and meet with these kiddos over here to make sure that I can answer any questions they might have about the math lesson. But for a majority of the class over here, did they understand the math lesson? I would say, yeah, they did. So let's do a new one. Your class is having a bake sale for two weeks to raise money for new school playground equipment. So. Remember that it said um, two weeks. I put on here a chart that shows this would be during the first week. This would be kind of separated here in the second week and I kind of color coded it. Now there's days that are missing here because if this was, you know, your school doing a bake sale, you're not gonna be coming on the weekends to do that bake sale. So I left off those weekend dates and just included the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then again the next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and I separated it by um, colors there just to make it a little bit easier. So the number of goods that were sold. So on the sixth, there were how many goods that were sold? There were three. Looking at the seventh, how many goods were sold? Five of them. So you can see for each day how many goods 
were sold. And on our number line here, we have the dates. And we're going to start um, on our line plot adding in some X's for each of these dates. So on the sixth, there were three, so that is why we have three X's. Moving over here to the seventh, like we said, seventh has five. One, two, three, four, five. On the eighth, five, six, seven, eight X's there. Moving on to the ninth, that would be six items sold, six X's. On the tenth, ooh, we're going to have nine sold that day. Now moving on to that second week, on the 13th, there were two, so we're just gonna see two X's represented. Looking now at the 14th, we're going to see four X's represented. And the 15th, we will have seven X's. On the 16th, six X's. And on the 17th, whoa, that last day, there was a lot, 5, 10, 11, 12, to have 12 X's. Now we can answer a number of questions um, based off of this line plot. We could answer questions like, um, which day of the week had um, the least amount of sales? So um, looking at this one here, the sixth and the 13th, those ones are going to be our lowest amount of sales on those day. Now, the 6th, remember that was the beginning of the week, Monday. This one started again on the 13th, Monday. So going back to that question of which day of the week had the lowest number of sales, we could add the answer of Mondays, both Mondays, had the lowest amount of sales. We could say which day, which date had the um, highest number of sales. So that date would just be one answer here that has the most amount of sales right here, which would be the 17th. So other information that we could gather from this is we could think on the last day of um, the sale, there was the most amount of sales, maybe because people knew that that was the last day and wanted to buy out um, all, of, all of the inventory, or maybe that was a day that um, since the class that was selling the items um, knew that it was the last day, they wanted to get rid of their inventory, so they slashed the prices that day. But um, that's some information that we could maybe possibly infer from um, this line plot.